Hi, I'm Matt, and today I'm back with more tips to help you enjoy the best of the West. Today I'm going to cover seven things that you need to know about lodging in Grand Teton National Park and the surrounding Jackson Hole Valley if you're thinking about visiting there. Now in this video, I'm only going to cover lodging like hotels and resorts. I will not cover camping because I did that in another video. Okay, so the first thing is to understand the area. I always have to explain this to people because if you're new to Grand Teton, you probably don't really understand some of the terminology or, or the layout of the land. The Jackson Hole Valley is a valley in Western Wyoming that includes Grand Teton National Park and the city of Jackson, Wyoming and the Teton Valley Resort. So Jackson Hole is the valley that includes all that. Hole is a term that mountain men use to mean valley. Grand Teton National Park is part of Jackson Hole Valley. In fact, it includes most of the valley floor in Jackson and then it includes the Teton Mountain Range. Just beneath Grand Teton National Park is Jackson, Wyoming, the town, and Teton Village, a resort. Those two are not part of the national park, but they are included in Jackson Hole Valley. Okay, so there's your overview. The second thing to know is that lodging is not cheap in Jackson Hole. It is quite an expensive place to stay. It's actually prices a lot of people out of it, unfortunately. Prices in Jackson Hole for lodging can range from about $200 a night on the low end to over $4,000 a night on the high end. Yes, $4,000. If you're just looking for some basic accommodations, you can plan on spending probably somewhere around $250 a night to $350 per night. And that's if you book well in advance when the more affordable locations are still available. The third thing you need to know is that it is worth it. Surprisingly, it is worth it. And I mean that in two ways. So first of all, it's worth it to spend $350 a night to see Grand Teton National Park. It's actually a very, very special place. And I'll tell you a couple of reasons why. First of all, the Teton Mountain Range is really impressive. It's unforgettable. It's one of the coolest mountain ranges you'll ever see. It is the youngest mountain range in the Rocky Mountains. As I mentioned, it sits in that Jackson Hole Valley, which is a very flat valley floor. And then the Teton Mountains rise out of that valley floor almost straight up it seems like 7,000 feet so it's just really an unforgettable a very unique mountain range secondly it's one of the best places in the lower 48 states to see wildlife together with Yellowstone these two parks make up what is called the greater Yellowstone ecosystem which has probably the most wildlife of any area in the lower 48 states people often think of visiting Yellowstone to see the wildlife but you're just as likely or maybe even more so to see wildlife in Grand Teton National Park. Wildlife you might see would be bison, elk, antelope, moose. The Jackson Hole Valley is famous for moose. And you might even see some bears there. So the most famous bear in the world is Bear 399. She frequents the Jackson Hole Valley with her four cubs. I have done another video on Bear 399, so I'll put a card up here for Bear 399 if you want to learn more about her. Also, there are so many activities in Grand Teton to do like biking and hiking and rock climbing and kayaking and swimming. It's just really an amazing, fun place. River rafting is another one. So it's worth it to pay the price to see the park, but it's also worth it to stay in Jackson Hole rather than try to hit Grand Teton from Yellowstone. So a lot of people kind of think, well, I'm already, I've already got a place in Yellowstone. I'll just drop down into Grand Teton for a day. That makes for a long day and a lot of driving, so I wouldn't recommend it. Now, before we move on, I just want to let you know I'm putting a lot of resources down in the description below, including a trip planner video that my wife and I have done that really covers all the basic stuff that you need to know. Okay, so let's talk now about different areas that you can stay when you visit Jackson Hole. So let's talk about lodging in Grand Teton National Park. There are eight lodges or places that you can stay within the park. One of these places is a dormitory that is for climbers. So I'm gonna kind of leave that one out. You would have to be a rock climber most likely to want to stay there. The other places are all resort style lodging, meaning that you'll stay in probably a little cabin that's actually next to one of the lodges. And there you'll have a lot of options for activities such as swimming, kayaking, canoeing, horseback riding, river rafting, fishing, things like that. So all the ones in the park are kind of resort style lodging. Almost none have television or air conditioning. So they're fairly rustic compared to what you're going to be able to get out of the park. Now the air conditioning typically is not a big deal because it really doesn't get that hot there. The daytime temperatures get up around 80 degrees in the summer. It really, it really 
really actually feels great. Let me quickly cover each of them. The Jackson Lake Lodge is the crown jewel. Here you can actually stay in the lodge up on the second floor with views of the Tetons out of the windows which is just amazing. And then they also have many cottages nearby that you can stay in. This lodge was built in the 1950s by the same guy that built the Zion, Bryce, and Grand Canyon North Rim Lodges. And it really is quite a treasure. Just being in the lodge is quite a nice experience. I would encourage you to go visit it even if you're not staying in it. In the Jackson Lake Lodge, rooms are going to run around $400 to $900 a night. The next one is the Jenny Lake Lodge. This is kind of a cute little cabin lodge, but again, you'll stay in some cabins nearby. There are 37 cabins. This is actually the most expensive, and that's because you have to purchase a package that includes breakfast and a five-course dinner. It includes entertainment and other activities, biking, horseback riding, things like that. This is around $1,000 a night or more. The next one is Signal Mountain Lodge, which is located on Jackson Lake, and again, includes many of the same resort-style activities that I've mentioned. This one is, I believe, the oldest lodge in the park, and some of the cabins that you stay in there were actually built in the 1930s, so it's kind of an old one. The lodge itself is kind of an unassuming lodge. It's maybe the least attractive of the lodges in the park, but don't let that affect your decision. This is a pretty good place to stay because it is on the south side of Jackson Lake, so it's actually closer to the central part of Grand Teton National Park. It's a good location, and the prices are competitive at around $250 to $400 dollars a night. The next one is Headwaters Lodge at Flag Ranch. So this is actually located between Grand Teton National Park and Yellowstone National Park in a place called the John D. Rockefeller Jr. Memorial Parkway. Some people like to use this as a jumping off point or a home base for Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Parks. Generally, I would discourage this. If you use it as a jumping off point, you're gonna be doing a lot of driving every day. My take here is stay here if your primary focus is resort focused with activities and family fun stuff. Don't stay here if your primary focus is to really see Yellowstone and Grand Teton properly. The next one is Coulter Bay Cabins. Coulter Bay is a nice area right on the shores of Jackson Lake. You can actually walk over to the lake and play in the lake. It's a really nice area with boating and restaurants and all that stuff. It is a really popular place to camp and to stay in these cabins. So Coulter Bay is a great area. You can't really go wrong here. Finally, Dornan's is technically not in the park, but it is located right by the park headquarters, right by one of the main entrances, and really for all intents and purposes is within Grand Teton National Park. And it's a great place. The problem with Dornan's is it only has 12 cabins, but if you can get one of these cabins, they're pretty affordable, and you're in a really nice centrally located spot to see Grand Teton National Park. There is one other place, and it's called Triangle X Ranch. This is actually a dude ranch, so it's kind of unusual to have a dude ranch in the middle of a national park but this predates the time period that Jackson Hole was set aside to be part of the National Park. So originally the National Park just included the Teton Mountain Range but then Jackson Hole was included later much to the chagrin of many of the locals including the owner of Triangle X Ranch but as a result of that they got permission to continue as a dude ranch and they still operate as a dude ranch with a lot of activities there. This is about two thousand dollars per person per week. So it's actually more affordable than Jenny Lake. It's not really all that bad considering you're getting an entire week and you're getting activities, food, and just a lot of cool stuff to do at Triangle X Ranch. I would love to do this sometime. Okay, the fifth thing you need to know is about lodging in the city of Jackson. Here, you're gonna have the most variety of any of the locations. So you're gonna have some budget hotels like Super 8s, and you're gonna still have some pretty nice high-end hotels. So budget hotels, again, like super, there's a Super 8 in Jackson, there's a Flat Creek Inn, there's an Elk Refuge Inn. The Elk Refuge Inn is actually in a pretty cool spot up on the side of the hill that overlooks the National Elk Refuge. There's not much there in terms of elk, in the summer they actually go there in the winter to hang out but that's still a nice little location then there are also higher end locations like the wart hotel this is a really cool old historic building i think it was built in the 40s and it's interesting because the outside of it is an english tudor style but the whole town of jackson is an old west style so it kind of is unique in this area the inside is still that old western style though with a lot of wildlife bus and log furniture and railings and things like that. Okay, the sixth thing you need to know is 
Teton Village. So Teton Village, as I mentioned, is a ski resort. It, it actually sits right next to the south entrance to Grand Teton National Park. As I mentioned, it's a ski resort, so it's catered to wealthy people. And it's one of the one of the highest end ski resorts in America, I believe. They have a gondola ride to the top. So even in the summer, they've got some activities. It's really cool. You can take this gondola ride to the top. You can mountain bike down the hill. You can play frisbee golf. They have activities for the kids to jump on trampolines. They have a lot going on there, but you're going to pay for it. So what you're paying for here is a nice experience and nice accommodations. Some of the lower end places are around $500 a night. The higher end places over $4,000 per night. There is one place called the hostel, which is a hostel. So you literally just get a room. You might share this room with other people. You have shared accommodations, shared bathrooms and things like that. Even this, which is, seems like it's just a place to crash for the night is $200 per night. And then just south of Teton Village is a little town named Wilson. And there are plenty of bed and breakfasts in that area. Okay, the seventh thing you need to know is that there are some places beyond Jackson Hole Valley that you can stay in when you visit Grand Teton National Park. So if you go over to the Idaho side of the Tetons, there's a little city there called Victor, Idaho, and they have some lodging there, some basic motels that are a little more affordable. When I say a little more affordable, you're still around $200 a night, maybe a little bit more. There's a city about an hour south of Grand Teton and it's called Alpine, Wyoming. Again, it has a couple of little spots there that you can stay in. Some might be a little more affordable, but you are going to have to drive an hour each way every day. As I mentioned, Grand Teton is right by Yellowstone. So some people do stay in Yellowstone and they drop down to Grand Teton for a day just to check it out. Again, I don't really recommend it, but I have talked to plenty of people who've done it. If you stay in Grant Village in Yellowstone, that is on the south end of the park. And so you'll be a little closer if you wanna try that option and jump down to Grand Teton. I have spoken to a few people who stayed in West Yellowstone and drove all the way down to Teton and then all the way back to West Yellowstone in a day. Again, I wouldn't recommend it. It's just too much driving but those are some options for you. If you're visiting Grand Teton and you need a game plan, we have you covered. We have travel guides for this. In fact, I have designed a tour for you. So I'll show you where to go and I'll tell you about the places that's on our website at we'reintherockies.com. I already mentioned that we have a full trip planner video for you that you can watch that you really need to watch before you visit Grand Teton. It's really gonna help clarify a lot of things and all those resources are in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful trip to Grand Teton. We'll see you next time. And until then, go west, young traveler.